All right, I got these as a gift a long, long time ago. There are two autographed Michael Jordan cards, one from his college days at UNC and another from when he retired the first time to play baseball. A quick search on Google will show a Michael Jordan autograph card is worth anywhere from $42,000 to $600,000. So on my hands, I could quite literally be holding over a million dollars in value. So yeah, the hell am I doing? And why am I still holding these cards like they're CVS receipts? Especially right now, the sports card frenzy is insane. I probably won't have another chance to get as much for these again. Why? Well, right, here's the thing, I'm very lucky that I have a few friends who are very involved in the sports card business. I'm talking big money here. In any given month, they're spending in the tens of thousands of dollars on packs. So I asked one of them, good guy, doesn't know this channel exists, but maybe someday he'll find this video. Of course, I can't do that without your help in growing this channel. So support the cause and hit that like and subscribe button. I'm just starting out here and any sort of support I can get is greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. But yeah, if you ever see this video, Simon, thanks for all your help, man. He gave them a look and kind of told me what I was thinking. These cards, and more specifically these autographs, do check out. They look good. They're in great condition and the autographs do look on point. The one problem, there's almost no way to verify these, especially an MJ card, he explained, would almost require the autograph to be authenticated at the time MJ signed it. Anything after that will almost certainly come back with the status of unable to authenticate or low grade, killing the value. He mentioned I probably have been better off not even having them signed since the cards alone hold some pretty good value. Not to mention the way authentication companies are backed up because of the sports card frenzy, it may take almost a year to get these cards checked out and God forbid the value plummets in that time. So here I am with two houses inside these plastic cases and nothing I can do about it. This feels like one of those stories of people who lost their Bitcoin in a zip drive. But okay, wait, Bitcoin, that's actually a really good analogy. Let's, let's build on that. Let's look at Bitcoin and see if there's a way to use the same model to solve this problem. What if there was a way I could trade sports memorabilia digitally where every transaction is verified, where I can't run the risk of there being a fake or unauthenticated pieces, where I know the exact value of what I own and can buy, sell, and trade it in an instant, just like Bitcoin. Well, my friends, as you can already tell by the title of this video, Video, there is a solution for that, NBA Top Shot. At a high level, NBA Top Shot is no different than any other NFT marketplace. NFT stands for non-fungible token. Non-fungible meaning it can't be replaced by another identical item. NFTs are assets verified using blockchain technology, which really just means there's a bunch of computers recording each transaction on a ledger or like a long digital receipt showing who purchased what, when, and from whom. This ensures both authenticity and ownership are able to be verified at any given time indefinitely. NFTs can be any digital asset, images, videos, music and audio, tweets, really almost anything that can be exchanged digitally. The idea here being that once the asset is minted or made available on the blockchain, whoever purchases that NFT owns that digital asset. So let's say I decided to make this video here available for purchase as an NFT. Obviously anyone can view it. The same way anyone can view a painting in a museum or a gallery. I like to compare myself to art, but there is only ever one owner of that NFT. The same way there is ever only one owner of that painting. Now, given that there are almost infinite number of digital assets that can be exchanged, it makes sense that there would be different marketplaces to suit each of the different niches. There are marketplaces dedicated to digital art, others dedicated to selling tweets. And then you have NBA Top Shot, a marketplace dedicated to well, the NBA. More specifically, the exchanging and ownership of NBA highlights or moments as they're called on the platform. Let's take this Damian Lillard highlight, for example. Last second of the game, down by two, team comes up with a steal and he makes a three with no time left to win the game. Well, let's say I'm a huge Damian Lillard fan, which I am, and wanted to own that highlight just like I would any other NFT. Well, NBA Top Shot is a marketplace that just so happens to offer that. And it's there where for the low price of $21, I can purchase and own that moment. Now, that's definitely one of the cheaper ones. In the spectrum of pricing, that would definitely fall on the lower end. At the time of this video, the most expensive moment available for purchase is this John ja Morant dunk over Aaron Baines, which recently sold for $100,000. It is now available for no less than $240,000. That sounds crazy, but I always, when I write these scripts, I always look for stuff that might date the video and try to take them out so that, you know, it can be referenced for as long as possible. I feel like that's gonna be it. I feel like in like six months time or a year's time, there's gonna be stuff on there that's selling for like a million dollars. And that's gonna be the reason. Yeah, 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 that's gonna date this video. I already know. So let's take a step back here. We have two moments, both pretty awesome. One that's a game winner, and one that's a dunk. Both really impressive plays, but almost a quarter million dollar difference in the asking price between both. How or why is it that one is so much more expensive than the other? Well, let's answer that by looking at what goes into the value of a moment. The more we'll realize, 
Oh my goodness, I can't talk. The more we'll realize how similar this is to physical trading cards or really any other collectible. First thing that goes into the value of these moments, scarcity. As is with everything in economics, the value of something is generally calculated based on the difference between supply and demand. Scarcity breeds value. The less there is of something, the more it'll be worth, all else being equal. In this case, if I were to purchase this Damien Lillard moment, I wouldn't be the only one that has it. In fact, it would be one of 35,000. Think of it as one of 35,000 of these cards that were printed. This John Morant moment, on the other hand, is one of 25. The less there is of that moment, the greater the demand, hence the significantly higher asking price. You'll see here that the Lillard highlight is a circulating count, meaning at any time, NBA Top Shop may release more of those moments. So it's one of 35,000 today, but that may increase to 40K or 50K, minimizing the future value. As for this John Morant highlight, it's a fixed number. It's one of 25 and will always be one of 25. Now, when these cards are initially released, they're sold in different packs, just like you would if you were to go to the store and buy a pack of basketball cards. These packs provide plays from one of three categories or sets, those being common, rare, and legendary. Common sets generally map to moments that are well, more common or available. Each player can have multiple moments in these sets, but only one will have a circulating count. So in this case, once a new Lillard play gets added to the set, the one referenced earlier, that game winner, no longer has a circulating count. The final number of moments available being 35,000. It's still available for purchase, but there won't be any new ones issued. Rare and legendary sets work a little bit differently in that they only have one play per player, in each having a much lower number of moments issued. Rare moments usually don't exceed past 350, and legendary usually won't go over 100. And depending on which pack you buy, you have a better chance of getting more valuable moments. The more expensive the pack, the higher the value. So to summarize, scarcity is the first and biggest element in figuring out the valuation of a moment. The less there is, the greater the value. The second aspect after scarcity that informs the value of the moment is its serial number, which is assigned in chronological order of when the moment gets minted or made available. So in this case, the first Damian Lillard moment that's issued will be worth more than the second which is worth more than the third. Ideally, the closer you are to that first number, the better. Now, the other elements that inform the value are a bit more subjective. For example, another thing that increases the value of a moment is if the serial number matches the player's jersey number. Dame's a bad example because he wears zero and there's no serial number zero. They all start at one. But if you wore number three, you might see the third moment or the 33rd moment or the 333rd moment valued higher than a lot of the others. Also, if the player that's in the highlight owned that moment previously, like literally owned his own moment in NBA top shot and sells it, that's also considered extremely valuable. It's actually a ton of NBA players that are on the site. So when they've owned it previously, you can think of that moment as being the equivalent of an autographed card from that player. Obviously, there are other elements as well, right? How iconic the highlight is, who the player is that's in the highlight. All those being equal, a LeBron James dunk will be worth more than a Jared Dudley dunk. Not to bag on Jared Dudley. I love him. That's my guy. Shouts out. That's legend Jared Dudley. Okay, so we've gone through what NBA Top Shot is and at a high level, how it works and how each highlight gets its value. So now you're ready to hop in and buy your first pack. You go online to nbatopshot.com, click on packs, and you realize two things. One, these packs that people are making hundreds and thousands of dollars off are really cheap. They start at $9 for a common pack. You can't even buy a single moment for that little. Even the more expensive sets like the rare packs only go for $59 and legendary for $230, which sounds like a lot, but not when you can flip them right away for thousands of dollars. You're not really losing anything. And then comes the second thing you realize. All the packs, they're all sold out. Like, all of them, every single pack, even the cheap ones. And that, my friend, is how they get you. Packs are released similar to a sneakers drop. The average pack release is limited to between 5,000 and 10,000 in quantity. And just like a sneakers draw, you're competing with hundreds and thousands of other users, both humans and bots, during those pack drops. Now, assuming you take an L on this, which you probably will, you can still head to the marketplace, which is where the lucky bots, I'm sorry, humans, who won the draw, resell their moments from their packs. That's where you can go to buy the single Damian Lillard game winner or the single John Morant dunk we referenced earlier, kind of like StockX. If you think about it, NBA Top Shot is the entire sneaker market in one place. They make the shoes, they sell the shoes, and they resell the shoes. But instead of shoes, it's highlights. So that's NBA Top Shot today. What about tomorrow? What does the future of the platform look like? That's the fun part. Let's make some predictions. I think the biggest opportunity for NBA Top Shot would be to get into the gaming space. There have been some rumors about them developing a game in the future, but there haven't really been any details about what this looks like. I think it could come in the form of a couple potential options, some much less complex than others. One could be some type of competition between users' collections, kind of like fantasy football or basketball. But but instead, the roster is compiled based on the moments you collect. They've already done a ton of the groundwork here, allowing users to share everything they own in a digital showcase. 
I said, that's pretty basic. Let's think big picture here. Personally, I think it will make for an amazing acquisition by 2K or better yet, EA Sports. This would align perfectly with both 2K and EA's My Team and Ultimate Team products, where users collect players similar to how they would a moment in NBA Top Shot by opening packs, selling and trading those players, but also taking the extra step and using those players in the game. Now, 2K may not actually have to do this. They already have a mature product in NBA 2K and a feature like My Team. It would be pretty easy for them to port over this feature and create an NBA Top Shot competitor, leveraging their existing user base to prop up this new marketplace that extends beyond the game. People can continue to buy and sell players, cards, and moments like they do already. But the goal here would be to increase awareness and availability for people that maybe aren't interested in buying or playing the game, instead just want to exchange players like they can today in NBA Top Shot. The opposite of that would work as well. It would make another great entryway into the game. Like, hey, look, you built this dope collection of players. Wouldn't you actually want to play with them? Well, it just so happens we have this $70 game that allows you to do just that. Chipotle napkins. This room is littered with Chipotle napkins. EA, on the other hand, doesn't have a mature NBA video game product at all. In fact, right now they have no product. EA hasn't released an NBA game in a few years. That said, their ultimate team feature from their other sports games, namely FIFA and Madden, have been cash cows. EA's biggest problem has been grabbing market share back from their competitor in 2K in the NBA space. To be fair, their last game, NBA Live 19, was actually a very good game. And to be honest, I played it more than 2K. The problem here is that after a decade of L's and cancellations, they've all but burned any relationship they have with their existing fan base. But that could change by partnering or purchasing NBA Top Shot, which would allow them to find a fresh new audience. Just like I suggested with NBA 2K, EA could use this to find a new audience of consumers who are interested in buying digital collectibles, and at the same time, pull them over to the ultimate team product in NBA Live, breathing new life and excitement into EA's NBA product. But that's just my thought. Let me know what you think. Do you think NBA Top Shot is a sustainable product or is it just a fad? Should it get bought out by a company like 2K or EA? Or better yet, should they make their own game? And what the heck should I do with these cards, man? Help me. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to learn about what happened to all the other NBA games, I mean, like before it was just 2K, check out this video I made about where they all went and why 2K is the only game left today. It's a fun little aura history about the last 30 years of NBA games, and I'm sure it'll pull the heartstrings of nostalgia. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for making it through another video. If you enjoyed it, please, please, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're just starting out here and any sort of support that we can get is greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. And I genuinely mean that. And I can't thank each and every one of you that have been supportive thus far. And I promise, I promise, I promise y'all keep supporting and I'll keep putting the work in to make these videos better and better each time. I appreciate y'all for real. Thank y'all so much. Have a great rest of your day. Love y'all. Peace. Yo, I got one of the, oh, oh, oh no, that's not good. <laughs> Whoops, I was gonna show off my new mic stand. I just, <laughs> just broke it. Can y'all hear me from all the way over there? <laughs> oh no, I really just broke it. Oh man, I was so excited, man. I was like, dude, I felt like such a professional. I got a mic stand. Hold on, let me see if I can fix this. Ah, there we go. Bam. 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 Look at the motion. Look at the motion. Look at the motion. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Up. Down. I fixed that. I built this and I fixed it. Oh, I'm proud of myself. What do I do with these cars?